What's up guys, Caleb here, and today we are going to be discussing the LEGO Star Wars UCS Republic gunship that got revealed last Thursday. UCS gunship got revealed, it will be costing $350, and as after the size of it, I mean, that's a, it's really a massive set, and so it makes sense to be $350. I generally think it's worth it, but we'll touch up more on that later on in the video. Actually, a fan vote held on the ideas page by LEGO themselves on choosing the next massive UCS set. There was either a Republic gunship, a, I want to say it's called a Nemulon B frigate, and a TIE bomber. I personally voted for the TIE bomber, but that didn't even get close to the Republic gunship, which got about, I want to say, like, over 60% of the votes after reading the statistics. Like, it got a ton of the votes. And so it absolutely obliterated it, and at the start of 2020, they pretty much announced that the winner was the Republic gunship, and they were going to be making a UCS Republic gunship. Yes, a year and a half later, people have been waiting and talking about this for a year and a half now. We finally got it revealed on Thursday, and I really do think it's an incredible set, but it definitely has some pretty big flaws, and we're going to go over those in the video. This is the first of two massive UCS Star Wars sets that are coming this year. Later this year, I want to say in November, we are getting the UCS AT-AT, rumored to be $800. So we're really getting a lot of massive UCS sets this year, which is really, really cool. So will display this. It really just looks incredible. It is absolutely ginormous. I watched Potter Mini Fig Pal's review of it, and she basically said... That it was so massive, she didn't know where she was going to put it, and that was literally just almost too big. Like, it, this is almost UCS Falcon size, which is really saying something. Like, it's getting close to that. And it really is absolutely massive. Like, you definitely need its own small coffee table or dresser. Like, it wouldn't fit on my shelf back there. You need your own separate thing for this set, which it really is just ginormous. Honestly, a good bit bigger than I was expecting it to be. Personally, for me, I know it's going to be a bit controversial, but I feel like it is the best Star Wars ship from the worst Star Wars movie, Attack of the Clones, Episode 2. All they did was just kiss, like, the entire movie, and it was just easily the worst Star Wars movie out there. I hated that movie, but it is honestly a great spaceship, and I'm glad that we're getting more prequels UCS sets. One of the only prequel UCS sets from some of those earlier ones, I want to say, after I'm in our productions, I'm pretty sure you said that. But yeah, it's cool to be getting a prequel UCS set, even if it is, you know, that from the worst movie. It's still a really cool ship to make a set off of. The minifigs. This is where the set starts to fall apart a little bit. There's been an absolute outrage in the LEGO Star Wars community about these because LEGO literally asked in the thing what minifigs we wanted with them. They asked us, which minifigs do you wanted? Nobody said anything about these two figures. I wanted a clone pilot and this other Jedi dude and all this other stuff, and we got none of that. We got two figures that everybody disliked. Apparently they didn't include a clone pilot in there and said the yellow one should be the clone pilot, and apparently a bunch of LEGO Star Wars fans think, you know, LEGO designers are dumb and stuff, and LEGO designers think the fans are dumb. And it's this huge thing about the minifigs that everybody hates the LEGO designers for pretty much doing this and screwing us with the minifigs. Personally, I think they're, I don't know, decent minifigs. I wish we would have got other minifigs that were in the scene, such as Commander Cody, I think a lot of people wanted. I don't know, it just seems like we should have been getting a little bit more than two semi-lousy minifigs in the set. I don't know. The minifigs are a little bit disappointing to me, and a lot of people really hate them. Apparently it has the two big cockpits, and it also has, like, the inside, and obviously this isn't quite minifig scale, but that would be where, I guess, the clone troopers would hang out and get ready to deploy, would be my guess. And it also has missiles on the top of there, which is a really cool detail. And when you spin one missile, all the missiles spin on the other side, too, which is a really cool detail. Another thing a ton of LEGO Star Wars fans hate about this set is that they apparently use the wrong logo on the top of the box and on the actual model. Apparently, this is the Imperial logo, and they were supposed to use some sort of clone logo. To be fair, they do look a lot alike, and I can sort of see where Leo gets mixed up with this. I know I've said this in other videos, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm sure I'm going to get some hot water with some Star Wars fans about this, but I'm not that nerdy. I mean, I really do not care about that. Like, you could put a pink unicorn in there, and I wouldn't even notice. Well, maybe maybe that's a little bit far. 
honest, I didn't even notice until people said this. I didn't notice at all, and I think if you asked most of my friends and people and adults I know, you know, is what's wrong with this, I don't think hardly anybody would get this unless you're some huge Star Wars fan, which I am not. I'm not, I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm not, like, all in on Star Wars, and so, you know, I just didn't even notice it. I don't give a crap about it at all. A ton of people are really angry. Apparently it is literally the wrong Lego, which I don't know how Lego managed to get the wrong logo on a $350 set, but it doesn't look any different to me. I didn't notice it, and I'm pretty sure most Lego fans aren't going to notice this, although a lot of them do, apparently. The color scheme on this is beautiful with the white and the lime and the dark red and the black and brown and gray all really complement each other very well on this set and makes the whole set look very, very nice. Let's see with this picture of this guy holding it, this thing is massive. Like, this is the size of a small child. Like, this set is just, it, it's really, really big. I'm kind of surprised by the massive size of it. So, oh, the UCS Star Wars Republic gunship, will I be picking it up? Most likely not. I'm not going to save up $300, $350. And especially because of the sizes, I just don't really have the space for it. Maybe one of those sets where I'm just going to sort of admire it from a distance, like a lot of the other massive LEGO like, Star Wars sets that are out right now. And, you know, it's not a bad set. It's a really good set. Don't get me wrong. I do generally think it's the best Star Wars set of the year. This, this year's LEGO Star Wars just has not been that great, objectively. A lot of people agree. And this is easily the best set of the year so far, although I'm incredibly excited for the UCS AT-AT. I've been, I don't know, I'm just getting more and more excited for it. I used to not like it, and now I'm sort of liking it, and you know, I'm really excited to see the official pictures. I'm sure this thing is going to sell like hotcakes, like Final First Battle Pack sells out in the first minute on lego.com sort of thing. Like this is, this is really going to be banging for a while. So you guys' thoughts on the set in the comments below, if you guys are going to pick it up or not, what do you guys think of the minifigs, the logo being changed, whatever. Seabird Productions, sound off for now. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my latest content, because I have some pretty cool videos coming soon, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.